Nike golf balls are back, but this time without the swoosh. Let me explain. So this story starts back in 2011 when Nike moved away from a rubber core to a resin core. Now the idea of that it was lighter, they could manipulate the material to make it a bigger core, to make the ball faster, to make you hit the ball longer distances. In 2014, they brought out another new version. And then in 2016, they brought out the final version. Because as you know, Nike stopped making golf equipment in 2016. Now these golf balls I've got in my hand right now are the very final edition of the Nike golf ball from 2016 and they're really hard to get hold of. Luckily, my good friend Dan from Instagram, who's a massive Nike fan, sent them over. Now, I must admit, of all the times I've tested Nike golf balls, I was never the biggest fan, but I felt like they were getting better and better each time. And certainly this golf ball I thought was their best product so far. As you know, 2016, these vanished. Now, a couple of weeks ago, somebody sent me a link to some new golf balls. So I thought I'd check them out and I bought some. And they're these. Now, does that box look familiar? Resin, the RZN, even, look at this, got the same design on the golf ball. So I did a little bit of digging. So this box of golf balls cost me £22.99. As soon as they arrived, I took them out of the box and had a proper look at them. And I couldn't believe how similar they looked compared to the Nike golf ball that Dan sent me. I mean, literally exactly the same. Same dimple pattern, same dimple in dimple. Bar the logos, there is no big difference. So I went on their website to find out a little bit more information. And what I found is very interesting. And this is what I found on the website. In 2011, we worked closely with the customer's R&D team to develop the first tour level urethane covered golf ball with resin technology. From 2011 to 2016, golf ball with resin technology helped elite golf athletes claim more than 50 wins in professional golf tours around the world, which included PGA Tour, LPGA Tour, PGA European Tour, Ladies European Tour, and including four majors. Since our customer made its strategic business decision to transition out of golf equipment in August of 2016, sounds familiar, right? We have made our commitment to take over the production of golf balls and keep supplying premium golf balls to golfers of every level. So my suspicions were true. They were facts. The guys who were making the Nike golf ball, Feng Tay Enterprises, the business, they bought the patent in 2016 and they now make that same golf ball, but under their own branding. So in the UK, there's three models available. There's a Tour, a Star, and a Force golf ball. I actually bought all three of them. But for me, the Tour was the one that probably intrigued me the most. Now, since buying those, I also saw in the US, they actually have a four-piece golf ball. This is only three. One in the US is four-piece, which I'd love to get my hands on potentially to review. It's a little bit more expensive at $35 a dozen. I wanted to see if these were any decent. At £22.99, that is a good price if the ball performs. So I want to talk about looks first, because a couple of things I really like. First off, this line that's painted on the side, really clean, really clear, great for alignment. The other big thing I like is the fact it's not perfectly pearly white. It's a slight off-white, which always gives me the feeling it's going to be a very soft urethane cover. So the first place I went to was the putting and chipping green. I wanted to see what the feel of this golf ball was like. And I've got to say, this golf ball feels really nice. It's not super soft, but it's soft enough. Again, reminds me of the Nike golf ball. I also hit some little chips with it, felt great with the wedge and actually spun really nice into the green. One thing I was always really impressed with with the Nike golf ball was the durability. I tested this golf ball for durability as well. I'll tell you that in a while. You've got to remember, why did they use resin in the first place? Why was that a big talking point? Because it was about speed. It was about distance. It was about getting the best energy transfer. So I jumped here in the home simulator to test that. I hit it with sand wedge, seven iron and driver. And the performance 
was very nice indeed. I felt like I got really good control off the wedge. My spin numbers were nearly 10,000 10, RPM, which is exactly what I want from a premium golf ball. And then with the seven iron, good distances again, 173 yards of carry. The spin numbers were just a fraction lower than I've seen with some premium golf balls. But again, I don't think that's gonna make a massive difference. And again, they felt fantastic on full shots. And then we moved on to driver. So I wanted to see if this golf ball was gonna be super long. And as much as it wasn't the longest golf ball I've ever tested, it wasn't disappointing either. Around about 280 yards of carry. Again, really good spin numbers, decent ball speed. Then it comes back to my other point, the durability. I hit 10 shots in a bunker, and a lot of the time on a soft urethane covered golf ball, you do see scratches, you do see some damage. The 10 shots, honestly, the golf ball still looked brand new. There was, a, there was maybe one or two marks I've got to give huge credit for the durability. And that's sometimes where a lot of brands that are cheaper price point, I've tested other balls in that category, do really struggle. This didn't struggle there. So, so far I've done all the tests I wanted to do. Feel, distance, durability, everything was good so far. The last thing to do is chop it in half. Let's see what the center looks like. Is it nice and symmetrical? And also what does it even look like? And inside, that's really interesting. Three layers, I kind of expected it to look blue or to look different, but it doesn't. There's not loads and loads going on. It looks very symmetrical. There's nothing that concerns me at all there. That is the resin ball chopped in half. So in summary, it's a good golf ball. And you think for the price, it's a very good golf ball. And it got me thinking when Nike were making this golf ball with the swoosh on it, it was nearly 40 pound a dozen, nearly double the price. And was that because of the extra R&D? Or was it to pay for Tiger Woods' wages? Something to consider. We'll see you next time.